not able to pull up the packet on eScribe um, at all, but um, I am sure they're fine, so I will say yes. Okay, anything you'd like to pull from the consent items? Not for me. Moving to three, water smart with uh, loose about um, energy efficiency grant. Yes, so I uh, we are applying for the um, water smart water and energy efficiency grant for 2025. Um, it is due November 13th, and we will be uh, we will receive notice of award uh, or selection in May 2025, and then um, the funds will be distributed in October 2025. And I am just asking, so they require for us to ask for council approval in order to apply for the grant. So that is, I'm wanting your approval to be able to apply for the grant. We are requesting funds for our SCADA uh, project and um, Angela's team is working on that. We can request up to $5 million with a 50% match. Um, and so we're still working out on what projects we wanna include um, just because uh, SCADA is so broad and um, on what the how much funding we will be requesting, but that is the max. So any strings attached uh, that we need to be aware of to the grant? Does the 50 percent match as long as we have as long as we provide the 50 percent match? There is no. OK, strings. Councilmember Bergen, you uh, you're good at yes. following the money and tracking money. What do you think? <laughs> I, I like when we get free money. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that goes forward then. Awesome. I'm Thanks. here for free money too. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome. welcome. I think you're up in awesome. Vail, aren't you, uh, Councilmember Hancock? I am headed up to Vail for a conference with Visit Aurora. So it's, yeah. Lucky you. That's funny. Very nice. Beautiful, beautiful spot. <laughs> Moving on to four intergovernmental agreement with Central Colorado Water Conservancy District. Brighton Ditch Company stock, Dawn. Yes, so this is a purchase of water rights. And typically we don't bring purchases of water rights through water policy committee. Um, if it's under a million dollars, it's signed by Marshall. If it's over a million dollars, it goes through the city council process to regular session. But in this case, it is an intergovernmental agreement, which is why we brought it to the water policy committee and it'll go through study and regular if it's approved. This is a purchase for 0.1 share of the Brighton Ditch. There's a total of 20 shares in this ditch. Um, it's not a large share ownership, but it's a large water right and a very important water right to Aurora. Uh, this ditch uh, and actually, would you mind, Casey, bringing up the map in the packet for the screen, if you don't mind? Uh, this uh, ditch runs right along our Prairie Waters project. Uh, it actually goes on one side of our pump station. It's right up against our Walker Reservoir, so a very important ditch to us. This particular water right is owned by Central Colorado Water Conservancy District. Um, this district uses water like this for augmentation of tributary wells throughout the basin. And as their well ownership and augmentation changes over time, different water rights become less important to them, less needed in their augmentation plan. So uh, in this case, we actually reached out to Central and asked if they would be interested in selling this water right to us. Typically, our sellers come to us rather than us going to them. But in this case, we uh, reached out to see if they were interested, and they were. This share uses Aurora's infrastructure already. Um, they've been using our augmentation stations along the Brighton Ditch to deliver their water. It is already changed for uh, municipal and augmentation uses. It is not changed for Aurora's location of use. So we will still have to take it through water court, but because it has already been changed uh, through water court, the risk has already been absorbed, which is why we are paying a little bit more for this water as a changed water, right? Uh, it's going to net about 16.85 acre feet of water. And uh, it does come along with a dry up covenant on a farm that was histor historically irrigated, which uh, if you can zoom out a little for me, Excuse me, 16.85 um, acre feet in what period of time? Per year. Per year, okay. So that little red box is where the historically irrigated agriculture was. As you can see, the different uh, gravel pits around it. This one is also becoming a gravel pit that is owned by uh, the city of Westminster. And our pump station is just to the south um, of where this location is. So Walker Reservoir uh, are the two pits to the right and southeast, so east and southeast of that location, just to give you some relevance of where this fits within our portfolio of water rights. 
The purchase price is $589,750. And um, I would ask that uh, for your approval to move this forward to study session. Questions from council members? Just, did, did you say um, it has to go to water court to change the the designation? Because I thought for the use, I guess, right? Or location of use. So it's currently decreed for use within the Central Colorado Water Conservancy District's augmentation plans. We would need to change it for Aurora's uses in our use locations. So uh, it would be a simple water court application okay. for this. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, are we okay moving that forward? Yes. Moving forward. Yes. Great, thank, thank you. you. Number five is interesting to me because when I was a little boy with a big imagination, uh, I moved a lot of dirt and sand with my Tonka uh, trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Matthew. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I, I'll be going over actually four separate IGAs with Ember Water. Um, uh, and all these IGAs are uh, run under the the overarching foothills agreement with Denver Water that we have. Uh, Denver owns 82.2% uh, of the uh, of the Strontra Springs operation. We own 15.73%. Uh, um, so I don't keep repeating myself. If any of these projects were to go over the estimated cost of the IGA by 10% or more, we'll amend we'll we'll, we'll amend the IGA and come back to you. If, requesting for more fundage and any unforeseen um, uh, expenditures, condition changes, all that kind of stuff. If, if it goes over the 10%, we'll bring it back to you. Mm -hmm. So the first project that I have is the Strontia Springs Deep Sediment Removal Project. Um, it's designed to enhance the operation and longevity of Strontia Springs um, Dam. The goal is to remove um, up to 10,000 cubic yards of sediment that's at the bottom near the dam, not the entire reservoir, it's just a small section that's critical for the dam outlet works. So um, we've been going through some of the, the study portions of it, and now we're, we're turning this into a much larger project. Um, it's going to be broke out in two phases. Uh, phase one is going to be alternative analysis, design, permitting, and coordination. Second phase is going to be construction, construction management, and, and project management. The total cost for the pro estimated cost for the project is eight point six million dollars. Um, Aurora's share is one point three million of that. Um, so I am requesting if uh, council supports to moving this to regular council meeting. Questions, concerns? I have a question. Where yes. does the sediment go? Do we do we sell it, or does it go for other projects, or do what happens to it? The current plan is Denver Water has some property at, at near the entrance of Waterton Canyon and they'll disperse it and uh, dry it out. Um, I know when they did another sediment project, they tried to sell it, but they couldn't get any action and they just they have room just, just to, to they'll set it on the site, dry it out, see if they can sell any of it. But um, there's um, some of the materials and uh, compounds in the sediment probably is a no one's going to want to buy it, in my opinion, at this point. So it'll be looked at when they do more detailed water or sediment samples. Okay. Hearing no other comments, uh, that moves forward. Number six. All right. So the next one is the Strontia Springs Outlet Works for Refurbishment Project. Um, the plan here is to procure and install two new 8-inch fixed cone valves, one 18-inch fixed cone valves. These valves are crucial for operation of the uh, um, the outlet works, the dam emergency outlet works, the op normal operating flows uh, that get released from the reservoir. They'll also rep be replacing five exist existing actuators with new electrical actuators. Um, replacement of eight ultrasonic flow meters. And the project will also involve upgrading the facility's lightings, HVAC system, additional controls, and electrical equipment equipment to ensure modern, efficient, and safe working conditions. Um, after the, the the funding was submitted to the commentary, Denver did give me an update. So the on on the um, council commentary as one point or excuse me, 3.2 million, that was it'll be increased to 3.7, which if this goes to council, full council meeting, we'll make sure that's updated and corrected. So as of now, the current project cost is 3.7 million and Aurora's share is 582,000. Okay, 
My, my qu request is to have council move this to regular council meeting. Okay. Comments or questions? Can we generate power from the thing? They can. They we can. don't have part. We don't have ownership of the power of that Toronto Springs. They have currently, currently have one megawatt generated there. Is that correct? What's that? Is there generous? There is some. Yes. Okay. Uh, they believe it's a megawatt. A megawatt. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. But they own 100% of it. We don't have any involvement in that. Okay. So six moves forward. Number seven. All right. Number seven is the Stronger Springs bypass study. Uh, we seek to investigate and develop alternative to a bypass of the raw water system around or through Stronger Springs. Um, the main reason is for uh, to help mitigate any water quality issues help with the mitigation of a single point of failure and allow for removal and management of the sediment deposits in the reservoir. Um, the study is intended to deliver, deliver a high level of alternatives and cost estimates. Any further development construction projects, we would amend this IGA and come back and request more funding once we're there. So it's a real, it's a real high level alternative analysis and kind of see where, what options we might have because it is a single point of failure for both us and Denver Water. I see. Yeah. The project cost is $300,000. Estimate cost is $300,000. Our share is $47,190, which is 15.73%. That must look like, a, like piping going around the... There's a lot of ideas floating around. I don't, we don't know. Like That's why we got to look at it. I mean, I think everybody has kind of an idea. Some are really in, in the expensive range, but there might be some better alternatives that work better for us. But and that's steep terrain around there too. Oh yeah, very much so. Yeah, it, it would be a challenge. I'm interested in the project to see what we come up with. Yeah, I've snuck in there and tried to do some fishing on those steep banks in the past. So. <laughs> right. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm requesting that this get moved forward to study session. Study session. Okay. Any questions or comments? So, yes, I have a question because uh, I know nothing about this. But I, at the this study is to determine what we're going to do moving forward to make sure the water moves. Mm -hmm. Help help me understand what this actually does. The study does. So I think it's going to um, identify alternate deliveries through Strontia if something were to impact the dam and reservoir and their current outlet work structures. So we're just going to look at, you know, see what our options are. I mean, I don't want to speculate what those options are because I really don't know. Um, so, yeah, um, essentially just to, to identify and see what the best alternatives could be to bypass that the dam structure and outlet work structures if needed. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So do we think there is going to be a failure? No. Okay. Um, I, I know we do a lot of studies and a lot of people get paid monies for these studies. And so this is really critical that we do it at this point without any, um, there's no indications of a failure at this point. Yeah, so Strontia, we route almost all of our water through Strontia. So we have risk of a single point of fa failure. So even though the likelihood of failure is low, uh -huh. the consequence of failure is extremely high. Uh -huh. So we need to make sure we understand what the alternatives might be in case of that unlikely failure that would have a significantly high consequence. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so then if they, whatever they come up with in terms of alternatives would just be there for us to consider should anything happen. Potentially, or it might come up with a recommendation for some capital um, projects, some ideas to adjust some things or install some infrastructure in case of that scenario. So we'll just have to get through the evaluation to see what the recommendations look like. And then we'll have the conversation with Denver on what makes sense and what we move forward with. And then who does the study? Did it RFP have to go out from Denver? 
Uh, this uh, this is to uh, this is the, the beginning. We haven't selected anybody for the RFP or anything. This is just applying for funding to get to have funding available in twenty five. Oh. Just start the project. Okay. So I think I might have missed it. it. The study will start in uh, twenty five. So yes. Yeah, so oh, the, okay. the, the foothills agreement. The way it works with Denver Water is if there's certain expenditures over certain amounts we have to get funding authority we agree to get funding authority before moving forward with anything like an rfp process so that's where we are in this process is authorizing the funding such that an rfp could be put out okay great thank you and our share of the cost was how much 15.73 the total is uh, 47,190 dollars okay 47,000 okay I told you she tracks the money. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which is good. Which is good. Yeah. Any uh, so blessing to move it forward? Okay. That moves forward. Number eight. All right. The final one is the Strauncher going around the project. Um, this project will consist of design permitting, construction, and construction management and project management to mitigate rockfall hazards throughout Waterton Can Canyon. Phase one was conducted in 2019 with a separate IGA. Uh, the design for this project uh, will take place in 2025 and construction is planned for 2026. The estimated project cost for this IGA is $850,000. Our share is $133,705. Okay, questions, concerns? And this again is is for the for rocks. The yeah, rocks scaling off stations through the can canyon, uh, through water all the way up through Waterton Canyon and um, up towards the dam. They they they'll part of the design and uh, investigation process. They'll identify the rock scaling company will come in and I identify the critical areas to keep the keep the the area safe, and then they'll and then they'll bid it through there through that process. When we were there um, a few years ago. Is that when they put that kind of, you know, whatever fencing thing? Is that they, what that is? Uh, that's some a part of the process. Sometimes they'll uh, they'll they'll just knock the rocks off and let them fall and haul them off. Sometimes it's anchor bolts. Sometimes it's netting to protect the rocks from coming down. Yes. Okay. As long as they drain around there too. Oh yeah, very much. Whatever. They will okay. definitely protect those for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm asking if this could go to uh, the regular council meeting. Yep. Any opposition? We good? Moves forward. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, number nine, when completed, this will be the eighth man made wonder of the world. <laughs> and just note that Sarah Young has no gray hair now. <laughs> well, don't we'll be so sure about that. This much. Next Friday. Number nine, Sarah. Yeah. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward. Um, this is a, a partnership with um, Park County. One of their uh, big issues and concerns generally is their roads and the condition of them and use. Um, it ends up that County Road 53 kind of being that main access to Wild Horse. Oh, that dirt, that gravel road. It, yeah, that we were recently on bumping along, um, has some pretty major issues in terms of drainage um, and condition. Um, it's uh, critical that it's in good shape. Um, and so we are proposing to partner with them uh, for $250,000 to help uh, get that into a condition so it's passable for our heavy equipment. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay. Questions or comments? So it's the road that we were, we returned on, not the road we went on. It's, it was the, it was the road we went both directions on. It's early. It's almost just outside the site. Oh, okay. I thought we were on the wrong road that you took us on, Sarah. <laughs> I'm requesting that this get moved forward. <laughs> I feel like you couldn't wait for this item to go. <laughs> was, was it not? I mean, <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm good with it. <laughs> okay. It was an adventure. <laughs> I'd like to say Sarah's an excellent driver. Oh. She kept her hands at two and ten the whole time. <laughs> and on the way back, I had such confidence I took a nap at the van. <laughs> Well, it was a special occasion. Good job. Yeah, My husband folks. would probably not agree with you. Okay. <laughs> she was focused. All right. So uh, nine moves forward. 
Now to 10, Richard for uh, US Forest Service Collection Agreement for Forest Health Projects. Thank you very much. Um, um, I've actually brought uh, Matt Ashley in today. Uh, Matt is a water resources specialist in our uh, in our group, and he works um, a lot on our forest health projects. And so we thought uh, it would be a good opportunity for, for Matt to present um, on um, this uh, uh, proposed agreement. Thanks. OK, good. The technology worked. I, I clicked the button within PowerPoint that said share in your current meeting, and it actually worked. So <laughs> I'm not going to touch anything. Um, <laughs> Just to introduce myself, I'm Matt Ashley. I'm on Rich's IBES team in supply and demand, and I handle our um, partnerships for watershed health. So today I'm going to be asking for your approval for our annual collection agreement with the uh, United States Forest Service. Uh, but real quick, I'll give you just a little bit of background. So we have a five year MOU with the Forest Service. And this is just a very broad agreement to agree to work together on watershed health projects. Uh, primarily forest health projects. There's no project specifics in the five year MOU. Um, those specifics go in the yearly collection agreements. Um, and then just to give you some quick background also, when it comes to our watershed health, uh, the Forest Service manages the vast majority of moves. watershed and wildfire is the number, number one threat to our watershed health. So after a fire, um, it's kind of nice that Matt was just talking about all of the sediment in Strancha Springs because that's a direct result from wildfires um, and also uh, contamination of the water quality. So our support of fire prevention work um, is really just kind, kind of the idea that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So, so that's the idea behind all of this work. So our yearly collection agreements um, contain the project specifics and budgets for the projects we're going to be funding. Um, the 2024 collection agreement, we're going to be providing up to 100,000 to the Pike San Isabel National Forest to go towards forest health and fire prevention projects. Um, and I say up to 100,000 because that amount is likely to be reduced by our um, direct expenditures on um, a fire restoration project, which was the Interlochen fire at Twin Lakes. So let's see if this works. It worked. OK. So here's some pictures from the Interlochen fire. Um, and that's a picture um, at nighttime of the fire actually burning. Pretty great picture. So the fire happened June 11th to June 24th this year. Um, and as we all know, Twin Lakes is an extremely important asset in our water supply system. Um, and the fire burned directly above Twin Lakes right down to the shore. Strancha, if something were to impact. Have sediment and water quality impacts on Twin Lakes. And uh, I actually was able to tour the burn scar area um, at the end of July. And we saw evidence of runoff already making its way down into the lake. And that was actually just from really small storms. There was there hasn't even been really a big storm yet. So the final point I'd like to make is if you look at the lower picture there, you can see on the far left side kind of the, that's that far left side of the burn scar. Um, and you can see that kind of patchy lighter green colored area. That's actually a prescribed burn from 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, and that reduced the fuel loads and that essentially stopped this fire in its tracks. So that demonstrates really well this forestry type of work that we're supporting. So um, and that's just a great picture from our site visit day after um, our friends from Colorado Springs Utilities were able to get a boat to take us across the lake. So we got to take a boat ride and go hike through the burn scar. So um, we're working with them right now on some of the see what our options are. I mean, I don't want to speculate, which essentially comes down to cutting down some of those burned trees and laying them down in the gullies to prevent erosion. So it's pretty simple work, um, but by funding that directly, um, we're able to get that work done a lot faster before the snow flies this winter. So um, asking for your approval of our yearly collection agreement to go to study session. Questions, comments? You, wow, just... that is incredible work. I mean, gee whiz, what a amazing photograph of uh, the area there that yeah yeah thanks i'm happy to take anybody on site visits anytime so just let me know <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, i get to do pretty cool stuff do you do some thinning too of uh, beetle kill and yep. things like that yeah that's a huge there's a certain thing. term for that uh like kind of rhymes with furry scurry or something what, <laughs> what, what was that what you guys called that i haven't heard that one i'm not sure darn it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. 
but but thinning. Oh, yeah. the yeah. lumpy, lump, the lumpy, right? Oh, oh, groupy, uh, groupy, uh, groupy, uh, clumpy. Yes. groupy, clumpy, groupy, clumpy. Thank you. I'm oh, making note of this now. Worse than thank than you. The technical term. Groupy, <laughs> clumpy, clumpy. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you for that. <laughs> And, and okay. Matt asked for a, a forest ranger, I think. Uh, I try to, you know, I try to fit the green on and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for what you do. That's alternatives could be to bypass that. Moving, moving that forward, we're good. Excellent, excellent. Moving on then to eleven Cherry Creek Wells update and project timeline, Earl. Yes. Um, so little history um, first. So Cherry Creek Wells, we have six wells that are adjacent to Cherry Creek that have the pumping infrastructure and capacity of about 9 million gallons a day. Back June 2022, when the health advisory levels went out for PFAS, um, we started to analyze the water from those wells and we were at a limit that exceeded the health advisory level. So we essentially shut the wells down in August of 2022. So since then we've been doing additional testing and we've been looking at ways that we could potentially blend the water, which essentially the water from Cherry Creek Wells is blended with mountain water anyway. But what we were looking at, and Ann Molinaro put together a program and ran through the calculations, we we determined that we could bring the wells back on and at least use a small amount of that well water and blend it with water from our rampart line, which is mountain water, and um, convey it to Griswold. Um, <clears throat> we wanna keep that water at under two parts per trillion uh, and we've been very successful with that. Uh, so June, or excuse me, July 17th, we started to look at a couple different options. We brought on the wells, we brought on uh, 1.5 million gallons a day and, and uh, blended that with uh, around 28 uh, MGD from Griswold. And we were well below the, the two parts per trillion. Uh, our most recent, which was August 12th, uh, we're bringing in about 2 million gallons a day, uh, um, 20 million gallons a day from Rampart. And uh, we're still seeing numbers that are just barely over one part per trillion. So we're going to continue that use with the wells. As part of our long range planning, we are um, currently under design and acquisition of some of the design elements moving forward with a treatment process that will basically be placed right below Quincy uh, in that area. Um, and what those will be, well, they will be uh, vessels that uh, are ion exchange, which is another accepted method for treatment for um PFAS and um once we accomplish that we'll be able to put uh, a larger amount of the Cherry Creek well and so this is really um so we're looking at that uh if everything goes well I'd say conservatively about third quarter of next year we'll have that treatment up mm -hmm. and then also as a future part of the expansion there when we are able to do the inner tie at Quincy that will allow us to also move some of that Cherry Creek well water across to Wimlinger. And we can also use that blended water at Wimlinger, which currently we do not, which is counterintuitive to a lot of people because it's right across, you know, basically where we bring this water and then we go down to Griswold, but we we're not using it at Wimlinger currently. So, Right now, that uh, that is the update. We were reluctant at first to try to blend out the PFAS until we got a lot more analytical data, but we're very comfortable with it right now, and we're keeping it well below the health advisory level so that there aren't any issues. Okay, thanks, Earl. Yep. Uh, questions, comments? No. Yeah. Good job. Uh, thanks. I haven't seen these wells. Where are they located? So Matt, I'm going to kick back um, to you. We're from Arapahoe, you know, the, um, the, I call it the storm soccer fields. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. They're spread out either north and south of Arapahoe Road um, throughout the soccer field and all that. They're just little cab they're cabinets with some wellheads on it. And uh, when were they first constructed? 
and the original was in the 50s. 50s, and they've been taken offline uh, until recently. Right, right. Yeah. And is this downstream from the fire treatment, uh, the, the fire training facility, or upstream? It's upstream gradient-wise from the, are you talking the one in Denver? Well, no, it, when you take the trail, the Cherry Creek Trail, you oh. you pass it would be a fire training facility it would be where they spray yeah. and do yeah, all kinds of stuff. Trained. So there's a fire training facility right there. Yeah. Right Parker. next to the darn. In Parker? I mean, it's like uh, 150 great. feet away from the stream approximately. There we go. Mm -hmm. our source. You probably shouldn't have, <laughs> probably shouldn't have said anything. No, no, <laughs> that's good. I didn't know about that. Yeah, when I was training for a marathon, I'd, I'd run past. There was a great trail to run on. And uh, I was watching, you know, the... It's it's like our capstick mm -hmm. place to a degree. Yeah, bike by that like this summer. Jaws of life and uh, oh. fire simulation and. Well, we were kind of wondering what the source was for the bean mm -hmm. Now we know. Now you know who to sue. <laughs> right. Now we know who to send a bill to. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's interesting thing. So it's it's contributing substantial water that's, amounts to us right now. Uh the wells. The wells, yeah. Uh, it could be. Could we've, be. we've used those historically for blending. It's a fairly small percentage of yeah. our water supply, but it affords them the opportunity in the treatment plant to manage the treatment process, the alkalinity, right? Yes. The treatment process mm -hmm. a little differently. So it's not a huge volume, but it's a, a significant benefit. I see. Um, didn't we update the alkalinity system? We updated something there, right? Wibblinger, yeah. the CO2 system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So without that, we have to add some additional chemical essentially at the treatment plant if we don't have the wells to blend it. And the wells are not necessarily drawing water directly from the stream or the creek. It's subterranean it's uh, groundwater. Groundwater. Yeah, there's a connection probably to the to the surface water yeah. and to the now we know about uh, training yeah. facility. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I didn't make that connection. Could be where it's could be. Could be. Yeah. Oh, it almost it's almost certain. Yeah. Find out what they're doing down there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And here we are, at number twelve already. Miscellaneous matters for consideration. Any anything? Anybody has. How did I think? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Am my back here? Are we are we still on track to have a wise presentation? Yeah. Yeah, I have that down for next month. Okay, great. Thank you. That's what we're Hancock. Anything? And things have progressed with our friends at Sterling Sterling Ranch. They have. Okay. So we'll probably give an overview also a little bit next month, but as a preview, they came in, when was that, two weeks ago? Yeah. And agreed yeah. to the terms and conditions we had put out there. So yeah. they owe us, I haven't seen yet, unless they sent to somebody else, I haven't seen the red lines they promised to get to us. I haven't seen them either. So they owe us some red lines in the proposed terms and conditions that we would then uh, build into a revised agreement, but they agreed to um, all the terms and conditions we had told That's them good. they would need to. So thank you to the committee uh, for your support. I'm not sure we would have gotten there this quickly, maybe at all, without the support of uh, the Water Policy Committee and and I'm going to shout out uh, Councilman Bergen yep. was fantastic in helping us get to the point we did mm -hmm. and the rest of the committee. So thank you. They did, so that you know, set a meeting up with the mayor um, to try to shift the negotiations to their benefit a little bit and avoid some of the terms and conditions but the mayor was also very supportive and um after that meeting they reached out and said we'll agree to the terms and conditions needed it's so, good i know Councilmember bergen was asking some tough questions and yep. in that last meeting i know alex was ready to play hardball <laughs> i think she intimidated him yes <laughs> so yep yeah. it was fantastic good that's good yeah. news all right, uh, Casey, our next meeting? October 16th. 
October 16th. Fantastic. Well, we got uh, done in time for uh, Councilmember Bergen to make her next meeting, <laughs> her next event. Yay, thank you. That worked out great. Well, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. You too. Thank you, everyone.